For this knife, I'm going to be creating a wooden scabbard, and um, I'm going to make it a really thin scabbard so that it's going to feel, you know, as thin as maybe a little bit thicker than a leather sheath, but it's still going to have that rigidity of um, of a wooden sheath. I'm going to use my marking knife again, uh, this time to uh, kind of scribe out the the lines here. Scabbards usually look really bad when you try to mimic the blade on the outside. So what I'm going to do is um, kind of, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a taper just like the knife, but the very end of the scabbard will be, um, you know, square. Alright, got the glue on here. Now, I'm going to clamp it down. Hope for the best. So uh, the sheath has been glued up and now there's a bunch of glue gunk on the surface so I'm just going to knock that off with the rough side of this rasp. Now I'm going to take my uh, block plane and start planing it down. I marked where the knife is here um, with the pencil and uh, now I'm going to plane it down, which will give me a nice and smooth surface, and I'll try to keep uh, the sides kind of even and square. All right, I finally made myself one of these. Um, the vise just wasn't holding it, so um, I just nailed a thin piece of wood into the side of this uh, I think it's a four, four by four, and um, yeah, it works. It works pretty well. You just kind of press it up against that. This face here is flat, so it sits perpendicular to this uh, piece here. And as long as your strokes are going perpendicular to the uh, piece of wood, um, you don't really encounter many problems. I got the sheath carved down nice and thin. It's a very lightweight and you can't really can't really bend it or break it with your hands or anything like that. And also um, the way that I made it is that it kind of gets some friction towards the very end there because the knife kind of tapers more abruptly at the um, blade tang junction. So that's nice. Uh, when it's worn on the hip, this side will be out. So I'm going to put this um, piece of wood here. So now what I'm going to do is trace the outside of, um, of this. And then when I chisel it, I'm going to have to keep the chisel on the inside of those pencil marks so that this uh, fits in. This is the wooden piece that's going to go on. And of course the pencil lines are outside of the real line, so I'm going to uh, use my little marking knife and um, cut some grooves in that are, uh, you know, f closer in.
I carved a slight bevel on um, the sides that are going inside here because uh, it'll help with fitting up and also you won't be able to see it once it's glued in. Let's see if this works. Oh, that feels good. I think um, that fits in there right. So I think once I glue it down with some wood glue, it's going to be um, fitted up right. <laughs> yeah, you can hear that. Uh, the in one indication of a good fit with uh, you know wooden things is when you hear that clicking. I made a paper template of the um, of how the frog is going to look when it's finished, uh, or you know where it's supposed to be. And I probably should have used cardboard because when I cut it out, um, it ended up you know if it hits there on the other side, it's not going to get close. But actually, I think this might be a good thing. I think I can actually keep this because. Um, when I kind of get both sides even here, I have a feeling that once I um, punch these uh, holes, or you know, they, uh, I'll just use an awl to create the holes in here. Um, once I get those holes in and I tighten it down, I think that um, just the uh, leather stretching will probably bring it closer. Mark out the where I want the holes here. Uh, I'm just gonna have two on each side. Maybe one there, one there. When I put this all through, uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, really press all the way through it to get a big enough hole for the cord that I'm going to use. I'm not a skilled leather worker, so a lot of the stuff you see here is probably not how it's supposed to be done. Plus, the only tools I really have are the ones that I made and some really cheap stuff I got off of Amazon. So, uh, this is not professional work. Let's see what looks better if I, if I tighten it up like that. Ooh, that might look cool. Cross it over this piece and then uh, continue it. I'm not really sure what to do with the rest of this cord. Um, I know that some people, you know, use this cord and then tie it around their leg. I don't know, let's see here. That's, uh, no, that's not enough to go around your leg. Plus, it's going to be, it's, this is going to be higher up on the, um, on the leg anyway, so I, I, the sheath itself is just, just feather light because I, um, planed it so thin. So I think that it will be, uh, it won't, you know, swing around too much and bang up against somebody's leg. For the um, belt loop, I'm going to make it go about halfway up the handle. Alright, I cut a strip off. I'm going to sew this about there. I got the contact cement, so I'm going to uh, apply it here. And from the instructions, you wait like 15 minutes for it to uh, kind of get glossy, and then you just press it together. So I have uh, holes punched here, and um, I have a string with uh, two needles on it, and. Uh, I've seen some tutorials on, on YouTube on how to do this, and I, I've done, like, you know, part of a sheath before, but essentially, you um, put one needle in, 
and then you have to put the next needle in, but this time you have to um, pull the string back as you put the needle in because um, one problem that you can run into is that when the second needle goes in, it can actually pierce uh, the first needle's uh, um, line and that you know will cause a bunch of problems because you can't pull this line through anymore because this has already gone through it. And then when you do this second loop, um, you kind of hold both sides of this loop, and then you pull it tight, and then you pull the next one tight. I have this frog all nice and tight, and I don't think it's going to go anywhere, which is nice. So I'm going to attach it to the sheath and see how I can how well it carries. So I guess the regular user would uh, thread this through his belt. I guess it's kind of inconvenient to not have a little snap, but I don't have any snaps at the moment. So it'll be held about there. And the knife going like that. And then drawing Oh, I can see why people make like the little dangling knives, and I think what I might end up doing is uh, sew it together right there, and that way, um, maybe a little bit wider in case somebody has a wide belt, that way the sheath won't, you know, want to <laughs> go out like that when you take it out of the sheath. And I don't really need retention straps because um, the sheath itself kind of puts a little bit of pressure on there. I think that um, once this is cut off here, I think that would look pretty cool. Um, I cut off that uh, bottom piece and, um, and also I sewed up that area right here. Now, eh, it does rotate a little bit, but it's not as dramatic as before. Yeah, if you, if you draw like straight up, it works really well. I kind of like that. It's a nice rigid sheath. And also you can wear it on your uh, non-dominant side, which I actually kind of like the way this feels more than um, having it on your dominant hand side, because when you want your knife, it's almost like the, uh, the sword draw where you put your hand kind of on the scabbard, bring your hand over, and that just feels a lot more solid. This is how um, a Sendai is operated. Um, this one isn't made as well as it should be. Um, this piece is just simply bent over with nothing connect, uh, connecting it to the other side. Ideally, you would have just um, a piece of metal that uh, goes up across uh, and down and then it's um, uh, connected by another piece of metal that goes all the way through the um, uh, the wood. But this one works just fine for my purposes. Let me just switch the tang around here. Okay. sanded the bevels down and now it's time to start sharpening. Uh, what I use here is um, a diamond stone. I use two of them. One is red, one is green. One is the roughest side and then the other side gets smoother and it just gets progressively smoother as you go. I really like sharpening this way because it goes along with the sand, the sanding marks and also I think it just gives it a better edge because rather than doing this and giving your knife kind of a toothy edge, this makes it a little bit smoother because all the lines are running this way.
final side is right here. <laughs> um, these sharpening stones are, aren't too good um, when you use them wet because uh, whatever sort of adhesive they use doesn't work too well. Um, but with the red one, that happened as well. And all I had to do was just epoxy it back on. But I haven't epoxied this one yet, so um, I'm going to have to rig up a way to use it. I'm just going to put two clamps on either side. Oh no, look what it did to my hand! No. <laughs> no, that, that was from um, a disc sander, but yeah, it shaves hair, so that is good. So you can, you can chop wood with this, no problem. It's just not... It's just not as geared towards um, chopping as other knives would be. But the heat treat on this one is really nice. The edge holds up really well. So overall, I'm happy with the performance of this one. Yeah, it doesn't really have that like forward heavy feel to it, but other than that, it just feels like a really nice, I guess somebody would want it as a tactical blade um, or just an all purpose blade. It's not so much of like a super heavy chopper, uh, even though that doesn't make it super forward heavy for uh, chopping. I think it's uh, still a formidable knife for uh, general use in the woods. And as for the edge, oh yeah. Not a ding, so yeah, that's still like shaving sharp, isn't it? Yep, that's still shaving sharp. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna be jealous of the person who gets it if I sell it. <laughs> I'll probably sell it at the state fair or Instagram, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested in this.